Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ciphering Weather. In today's video we have a lot of areas of potential development but very low chances of seeing it actually happen. If you like detailed weather breakdowns hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltibbets.com for Wednesday, September 4th, 2024. Thank you for uh, joining me on this video again. I know it's been a few days since I did my last video. Uh, I came back from vacation uh, at the end of last week, and then uh, we had uh, the holiday weekend, and my kids started school, so I am back again, but can't be determined. I can't be definitive of when my next video will be because it's my free time is becoming a lot less. Uh, with the start of school and if I'm going to try and make a video every day I'm going to have to potentially wake up earlier and do it before I even start work in the morning so my videos might be out around six o'clock in the morning potentially if I was to do that so be on the be on the lookout for that potentially guys but let's get into this we have a lot of arrows here uh, but not a lot of chances for development and I'll discuss that in this video so we have our Disturbance 1 in red, we had Disturbance 2 in purple, Disturbance 3 in black, Disturbance 4 in pink, and then we have two areas of interest. One was a form of Disturbance in green in the Gulf of Mexico, and then another between Disturbance 3 and 4 in orange. So here is the vorticity of all those disturbances we were just discussing. And you can see that Disturbance 1, in my opinion, has the best chance of uh, becoming something tropical. Uh, but it would most likely be designated subtropical because it's part of a frontal boundary at the moment. And it would have to detach itself in order to become tropical with a warm core, broad area of nature. Then we have our form of disturbance in the Gulf. You can see that its vorticity there is also a little bit broad in nature. Uh, also associated with the same frontal boundary draped across the Gulf of Mexico. And then we have our tropical waves in the Caribbean and the main development region with another cluster in between Disturbance 3 and 4 trying to get itself organized as well and actually looks better than Disturbance 4 out in the eastern Atlantic by the Cabo Verde Islands. So here's that former Disturbance in the Gulf of Mexico that I didn't make it, have a chance to make a video while I was busy with school and the holidays. But you can see it's a cluster of thunderstorms, but nothing really forming as we don't have a very favorable uh, wind shear environment. Here's our three areas of concern in the main development region. Disturbance 3 and 4 in black and pink. And that much better organized cluster of thunderstorms in between them in orange which the National Hurricane Center is not quite picking up on it yet, but maybe it will uh, tomorrow if this continues to hold itself together and look as good as it does on the models. So here's a close-up view of the Sturpins 1. You can see that low-level swirl just to the northwest of our uh, image here, but all of its thunderstorms are being blown off to the north and east at the moment. It's, like I said, it's part of a, a frontal boundary system. The warm core is trying to hold on to thunderstorms, but there's too much wind shear at the moment to maintain thunderstorm convection. So we have a 10% chance over the next 24 hours to 48 hours, and a 20% chance over the next 7 days. Potentially see something subtropical form here. Disturbance 2, we have a tropical tropical wave moving through the Caribbean right near Jamaica. It has a 0% chance of developing over the next two days and is expected to cross the Yucatan Peninsula and depending on if it makes its way into the southwestern portions of the Gulf of Mexico or if it stays over land will determine if this one develops. Now if it stays over water it could be a 30% chance like the National Hurricane Center is saying. But some of the models are suggesting this one will stay over land, so that chances could likely be decreasing in subsequent videos. Then we have Disturbance 3, which is going to be encountering a large amount of wind shear eventually as it continues moving in a westward direction towards the 
northwest, uh, the northern portions of the Lesser Antilles Islands. It's got a 10% chance of developing over the next two days and seven days. Uh, but European models suggesting it could, if it doesn't uh, move across the greater Antilles Islands, like the GFS model is going to sh- uh, do, which I'll show you in a bit, if it moves north towards the Bahamas, potentially has a better chance of developing, which the European model is suggesting. So this 10% might jump up uh, if the European model solution is correct. And last but not least, we have the Sturbins 4, which is by our pink arrow up here, not to be confused by our bigger blob of convection in between Disturbance 3 and 4. Uh, so that little blob up there has got a 10% chance of developing over the next two days and a 20% chance over the next seven days. So let's look at that on the models here. GFS 850 millibar for density, spin and energy in the atmosphere. Again, we have red by the Bermuda, that is Disturbance 1, purple Disturbance 2, black Disturbance 3, pink Disturbance 4, and then green and orange are our non-disturbance ent- uh, tropical entities. So you see the large amount of wind shear across the Atlantic, right by Disturbance 3 and black, we have that upper level trough, so that's going to be causing a lot of its, uh, it's going to have a lot of problems getting through that. And then depending on the path, if it goes through the islands or north of there, we'll determine if it will develop. And all that wind shear is also has a lot of dry air in the Atlantic that these clusters of thunderstorms, the pockets of it, are uh, unfortunately can't take advantage of the even smaller amount of uh, lighter wind shear environments surrounding these areas of high wind shear. So... Two days from now on Friday, September 6th, that we can see just off the uh, New England coast, uh, we have our potential subtropical storm, that tight ball of vorticity in our red hexagon. That's its best chance of developing over the next 48 hours after that. We'll likely uh, get into too cool of waters in the North Atlantic to sustain any warm core. We have our former disturbance in green, moving back over western, I mean eastern Texas into Louisiana. So uh, unlikely to see development with that over land, and it's also still part of some frontal boundaries. Slowly moving disturbance two, moving over the Yucatan Peninsula at this point, and then we have disturbance three in black, encountering a ton of wind shear, and disturbance four, uh, trying to. Uh, develop some vorticity, but you can see it's uh, very broad in nature, better with the orange disturbance in between trying to form some vorticity there because it has a lighter wind shear environment versus disturbance three, which is that upper level trough it's going to be encountering, like I said. So all of this is going to be moving westward, except for a potential subtropical storm moving to the northeast. So now, day five, Wednesday, September 9th, and we have a couple of new players here. Our subtropical storm is already gone into the North Atlantic. Well, potential subtropical storm. Uh, Because our Bermuda Azores High is very weak at this point, we see a lot of uh, broad lines here. So we're going to have very slow movement of disturbance two and three. So they don't move very far, but you can see disturbance two has made its way to the Bay of Campeche, but mostly over land, so no development there. Uh, Disturbance 3 is moving over the greater Antilles Islands of Puerto Rico and Hispaniola, so no development there. Disturbance 4 in pink is trying to develop uh, just to the northwest of the Cabo Verde Islands, along with our orange uh, disturbance. That's why I think the National Hurricane Center may uh, start making that disturbance five potentially and then we have another stronger tropical wave coming off the coast of africa in blue so we have our wind shear environment which you can see much of the atlantic is hospitable right now to development a lot of wind shear except for near disturbance four and our orange disturbance where we have some light wind shear as well as coming off the coast of africa where we have that big blob of 
uh, tropical moisture coming off. We'll see if it uh, can sustain itself and erode away even more of this Saharan air layer that's been hampering all this development since the middle of uh, August. Then we get to day seven and we see orange is the best bet. None of the ones being designated by the National Hurricane Center are showing signs of development, but that one in between the three and four that have an orange is showing the best chance for development, at least according to the GFS model. What is the European model showing though? So let's put this into motion and you can see also that orange one has a good chance of developing before petering out. Very towards day seven, we see our black disturbance two come back alive just north of the Bahamas. That blue tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa has a good chance of developing. And then everything else is just a wash at this point. But as you can see on the ensemble models, who is supported and who's not supported. So we have on the GFS model on the right, disturbance two in purple, if it can stay over water, near the Cabo Verde uh, Bay of Campeche, sorry. Uh, we have some chance for development there. Disturbance 3 in black, nothing. Pink has a light chance of development before uh, moving into the middle of the Atlantic with too much wind shear. Orange has a little bit more support. The blue tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa has good support on both models, so that's good uh, potential there. Again, our sub potential subtropical storm in red off the east coast of the United States. If it can uh, detach itself from those warm fronts and cold fronts, potentially uh, be subtropical in nature. Uh, but other than that, next seven days looks rather quiet. Uh, but maybe that blue tropical wave will be signs of things to come with the intertropical virgin zone coming a little bit further to the south of across Africa, not kicking up as much Saharan dust. Maybe we'll, that will be the signs of the Atlantic trying to uh, bring some tropical life into the, in the Atlantic, which technically is we're in peak peak season right now and we are quiet. Crickets out there. So disturbance one, potential subtropical storm. Disturbance two, if it stays in the open waters of the southwest Car uh, Gulf of Mexico, potential to develop there. Otherwise, it's going to be too much land interaction. Three, if it can stay north of the islands and north, uh, like the European model suggesting, maybe development comes out of this one. Otherwise, it's going to have a tough struggle through that upper level trough and land interaction with the greater Antilles. And then four has a chance for development briefly before going north of the main development region. And then our question mark is that potential fifth disturbance. Does it get designated by the National Hurricane Center as the models are suggesting development? And our tropical wave behind that once it comes off the coast of Africa uh, shows signs of good development on both models, the European and the GFS. Next name on the list would be Francine. Right now, I think that potentially has a chance to become a subtropical storm with Disturbance 1. If not, Disturbance 4, maybe 5, or our tropical waves behind that could grab the name. As a reminder, we have a super thanks available on Deciphering Weather. So if you'd like to donate to the channel because you like what we're doing here, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you do like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.